my colleagues and friends. I'm very, very happy to be here as a part of this jointly put together program by STEP, UNFPA, and NCSW, the National Commission on the Status of Women. I feel that this is just the right time. During the 16 days of activism campaign, today is our second last day. Tomorrow we shall end. 10th of December is the last day of this elimination of violence against women campaign, which is global, which is universal. And tomorrow when we end, it's going to be the Human Rights Day. So our simple demand from all the vulnerable groups out here, whether it is the women of Pakistan, the minorities, the specially abled people, transgenders, from all of those groups, there is only one demand. Please treat us as human beings. We want nothing more than basic human rights. But I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that we shall not settle for anything less. The struggle will keep on going on. I can say this very strongly because I have spent decades of my life in this struggle. And I assure you that we have come a long way. Don't ever think that the women of Pakistan have not made any advancement. And that is why at the outset, I would like to reiterate that I totally disagree with the gender gap report issued by the World Economic Forum. I reject that report. The women of Pakistan have been put as second last country in the world. After us, there is only Afghanistan left. Do you believe that? Are we that far behind? No. So it's a big no. And just keep on repeating this no till we improve our status in the gender gap report, which is universal which does not let me sleep at night. It's like a nightmare. <coughs> and I sleep with it and I get up with it. Anyway, coming back to the topic of the day. We today are talking about disability inclusion. We are talking about gender-based violence and special services. And I am grateful to each one of these experts and panelists who are the major stakeholders who are going to take forward whatever we decide this afternoon and end this evening. Let's have a <coughs> joint way forward. Let's prove some solidarity this time. Can you imagine in a world which is post-COVID, do you know the post-COVID figures just briefly and fleetingly I would like to share those with you. Post-COVID violence against women figures. 45% women, this is a UN women survey that I'm quoting, 45% women in the world faced violence or could share the experience firsthand of another woman during the COVID 
pandemic. Seven out of every ten women faced violence, verbal or physical, in the hands of their partners. And that's pathetic. In the hands of their partners, they faced violence during the pandemic. And six out of ten women claimed that they saw an increase in violence at the public places. We saw that too in Pakistan. If you remember the episode of Lahore and interior sin. Another small example from the COVID statistics. When the children got back to school after COVID, in 20 September, there were 13 million missing enrollments. Ladies and gentlemen, 13 million missing enrollments. And what was the number of women? Girls, 60%. So 60% women, girls, were out of school just because of that one pandemic. So there's so much else that I can share with you, but coming back to the real subject, that if there is so much happening to average women in the world, in Pakistan, what do you expect to be happening to the women who are differently able? Can you just imagine? The misery is multiplied. The torture is multiplied. One, because they are women. A second, because they are disabled. So we have to understand what their day-to-day -day life feels like. This exclusion, this distortion of facts, sometimes challenge to their dignity, and not just by the society. Ladies and gentlemen, it is mostly by their own family and family members where they live. Am I correct? So how do we look at all that? How do we give these people the right place in our society? They are a part of us. They are us. The figures from, again I am quoting, UN Women, there are 700 million, 700 million disabled women across the globe. Look at the number. Out of the 700 million women, ladies and gentlemen, we have, for sure we know that, no sorry, not just women, 700 million is the total and 19.2% is the ratio in women and 12% is the ratio for men, if I'm right with my figures, 12% is for men, globally. Okay. So again there is a difference. There are more women who are physically challenged than men. So more difficulties, more problems for the world to face and for us as a society to face. Post floods, National Commission on the Status of Women, with the kind support of UNFPA, visited the badly affected areas very shortly after the floods happened, and then later on we worked on the SOPs. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that in all those meetings, in all those visits, we worked on your inclusion. We tried very, very hard 
to bring up the disabled and the transgenders, everything. And PDMA, for example, for example, the district health authorities, the police, they were not even ready initially to consider this important segment of our society. I mean, talking about women and children alone and the elderly alone is so difficult. And now we told them to make a database for the disabled. We asked them to make arrangements for the transgenders. They thought we were overburdening them. But we insisted. So as a society, we need to insist and persist. If we do not do that, this world is not going to change. The movement for the differently able would be जो मुहिम हमने आप लोगों के लिए चलानी है उसको इतना ही मजबूत होना चाहिए जितना के खवातीन के हकों की जनती जो हमने इस मुल्क में कई साल लड़ी है आपको उतना ही एग्रेसिव होना होगा ये खाली मीटिंग से सेमिनार से नहीं होना कुछ नहीं होना अगर आपने नेशनल असेंबली ऑफ पाकिस्तान में सीट लेनी है so next time aap mujhe le i will lead your jalsa jalus whatever it is and let's go to the parliament house let's put our demand forward kyun nahi dete ye ek seat aap logo ko kyun humne apne vote ke liye seat mangi hai hame ek saal lag gaya hamare vote pe hum ek differently able khatoon ki seat mein izafa karna chahte hain national commission जो कि हुकूमत का एक जेली अदारा है लेकिन उस सीट को हासिल करने के लिए हमने टकरे मार के वो बिल अभी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट से निकलवाया है और खुशखबरी ये है कि वो मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लॉ में पहुंच गया है लेकिन उसके बाद उसका क्या होना है कि आप ही जानते हैं मैं भी जानता हूं लेकिन धक्का लगाए बगैर कुछ नहीं हो सो इस सारी मूवमेंट में इस सारी जिद्दोजहद में हम सबको मिलकर बहसीत पाकिस्तानी सिटीजन रिस्पॉन्सिबल और जिम्मेदार शहरी होने के नाते हमें इस कैंपेन में जोर डालना है हुकूमत अपनी कोशिश कर रही है मैं ये नहीं कहना चाहती जो भी हुकूमत वक्त आती है वो कोशिश करती है लेकिन उनके इश्यूज में ये इश्यूज प्रायोरिटी नहीं होते उनके रिसोर्स के एलोकेशन सोशल सेक्टर के लिए नाकाफी है और ये किसी एक हुकूमत किसी एक पार्टी के ऊपर होता नहीं है ये सब के सब ऐसे तो आपकी आवाज क्योंकि आप लोग एक वॉइसलेस आवाज है दुनिया के जो डिसेबल्ड है वो भी वॉइसलेस है देखिए सेवन हंड्रेड मिलियन की हम बात कर रहे हैं और हम खुद उनको देख नहीं पाते हैं हमें एहसास नहीं कि उनकी तकालीफ क्या है इतनी बड़ी तादाद में लोग मौजूद हैं सो उनका जॉब कोटा उनकी सोशल अलाइनमेंट और कुछ नहीं तो उनके लिए रास्ते ही आसान बना दो और जो उनके रास्ते में ऑब्स्टिकल्स हैं वो हटा दो और अगर वो नहीं हटा सकते रास्ते की रुकावटें तो खुद उनके रास्ते की रुकावट मेरा आज के लिए इतना ही पैगाम है मैं हमेशा आपके साथ हूं मेरी आपकी जंग शुरू हुई थी जब थी फॉर स्पेशल एजुकेशन लेकिन फिर आपका मेरा साथ छूट गया अब कमीशन में अनफॉर्चुनेटली इतनी प्रोविजन नहीं है कि मैं आपके साथ वो काम कर सकूं जो मैं एज अ फेडरल मिनिस्टर कर सकती थी लेकिन जितनी अमीर उम्र बाकी रह गई है मैं चाहती हूँ जिस तरह मैंने औरतों के लिए बात की है उसी तरह मैं आपके कॉज के लिए भी करूँ और अगर हो सके तो मैं आप में से किसी एक को अपनी बकिया जिंदगी खत्म होने से पहले नेशनल असेंबली ऑफ पाकिस्तान में बैठा हुआ